In this video, we're going to stabilize some shaky handheld footage using two points of motion tracking in Blender. This is incredibly easy to do. I'm even calling it Stupid Easy. This is part of a new little mini series I'm doing of Stupid Easy VFX things to do in Blender. So this video is going to jump right into another video where we can take uh, exactly what we've done here and use it to do a sky replacement. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. Uh, if you're here just for the stabilization, then let's jump right into it. As you can see, I'm in the motion tracking section of Blender, and I'm just going to drop in a video clip. Here's a nice shaky handheld clip. As you can see, we can just play through that. And why would you want to stabilize footage? Well, if you ever want to make a shot that's shaky like this, and you just want to lock it off, um, then stabilization is the way to go. Or if you want to do something like replace the sky, video number two. As long as there's not a lot of rotation or um, translation inside the actual camera space, then you can just get away with doing two points of tracking and stabilize it just like that. So I've got my footage in here, and what I'm going to do is just track two points of high contrast. So I'm going to come in here again in the motion tracking section, uh, motion tracking section, I can't talk today, and I'm just going to pick two points of high contrast, uh, grab this corner of this window, control and left click to get a tracker in there. And if we come up here to clip display and do lock to selection, then uh, when we track it, Blender will stay locked onto that track. So let's press command T to track forward. And you can see uh, tracked no problem. It found that. Uh, so now let's do one more point of high contrast. And I like to go if you if you're able to, I like to go kind of opposite ends of the footage, just so we get all that uh, rotation translation data in there. Um, so I'm going to come down here and do something like this. And oh, I wasn't on the beginning of my footage, I was in the middle, but that's okay, I'm going to press Command T track forward, Command Shift T track backwards. Haha. <laughs> and so now uh, you can see it, it doesn't even deviate it pretty much stays there the entire time. Voila! Easy. All right, so now we have two really easy tracks. Let's come over here to stabilization. What I'll do is press A to select both of those tracks. I'm going to check 2D stabilization. I'm going to check rotation and scale. And then with both of these tracks selected, what we can do is where it says tracks for location, just add both of those and you can see it drops them in there. You can rename them if you're feeling fancy. And uh, tracks for rotation slash scale, drop those in as well. So it's using both of these for both the rotation data, the scale data, and uh, the location data. So uh, if we now play that, you can see uh, it did nothing. So that's great. Well, how do we get it to actually see the stabilization? Just come up here to clip display and show stable. <coughs> and now uh, Blender does a great job at showing you what it's doing in moving around your footage based off of these two points to keep it perfectly stable. And obviously we were gonna get a bunch of empty pixels down here. So we can take advantage of this nice auto scale feature, which just basically punches it in enough so that um, it gets rid of those empty pixels and keeps it stable. A cool thing about this auto scale is it's, uh, it's all dependent on one frame that it's anchored to. Right now it's frame one. If for some reason you wanted it to kind of favor a different side of the track, you can slide that anchor frame around and it'll still stay completely stable, but you can kind of, like for instance, maybe you wanted the edge of that house in shot, you can kind of slide it around until you get that. And then it'll stay anchored to that section of the footage uh, versus frame one. So that's just a helpful tip there. I'm gonna go somewhere around here. I think that I found pretty good and that works. So now we have a completely stabilized footage and you can do so many things with this, so super easy. Um, but how do we get this into like an actual clip? Because right now it just lives in the motion tracking section. Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go up here to the compositor. And this is how I have got my compositing set up. So don't panic if yours doesn't look like this. I just have a window split over here so that I can have my viewer nodes set up on a different side. I like to just keep my nodes separate that way. So I'm going to delete this render layer. We don't need that guy. It's as useless as the default cube right now. And I'm going to uh, drop in a movie clip node. And then our footage should be right there. If we press control shift and click, we can view that footage and zoom out here. And now, it, like I said, it's showing up in my viewer node on this side. Um, 
So if we were to just kind of scrub through that, it wouldn't, nothing would change. It wouldn't show up the stabilization that we did. To get it to show up, it's very easy. Just drop in a stabilized 2D node and then select your footage and leave it on bilinear, that's okay. And uh, now if you scrub, all the settings we did in the, in the motion tracking section are applied and we have a stabilized clip here. So um, everything that you see here now shows up using this stabilized 2D node. So if you wanted to export out your stabilized footage, hook it up to the compositor and just choose your output settings, your output directory, and you could choose your file format, PNG or movie clip, and just simply hit render animation. And Blender will render out your stabilized footage just like that, super easy. One could even say, stupid easy. All right, so that was it for the stabilization part of this. If that was all you were here for was just stabilize your footage, then you're done. And hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you wanna move on to how we can actually use this in an application sense and do something like replace a sky, then uh, continue watching the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. You guys like this video, by the way, down in the corner? I'm trying to compete with, you know, Andrew Price and, and Steve and all those guys. They don't know who I am. They don't care. But if you like it, let me know. And I'll keep doing it. If you don't like it, some people don't like it. Some people are like, get your face out of here. I just want to see the screen. So uh, actually, that's what I'm going to do now. So see ya.